Um, yep. So we're back again. We're just going to go tackle some more in-depth things. Now we've set up our workspace. So back to selecting a platonic solid there. Um, and what we're going to do is just turn the grid off for the moment. And just discuss some anatomy here. So these points here, these corners of the cube, are known as vertexes or vertices I'll refer to them as. And we want to have four of those for every face. So these are called vertices. These are called faces here. And these are edges. Really, really simple. Um, so edges here. So just to highlight those again, edges, edges, vertices here, vertices on the corners and faces here. So these faces we generally want as a rule to be four one, two, three, four edges. Um, really basic, they're called polygons. Realistically, they're uh, four edged um, polys. That's best practice. Uh, again, as I mentioned in class, mine is a bit different to say uh, SolidWorks or Fusion in the sense that there's no safety net, that you can easily muck up a model and there's no um, simple recourse to get it back to its former self. So best practice is just keep this really simple and four sides. Um, okay. Uh, can we take this off? Oh. Back again. Now, putting the grid back on. So we can take a face and we can scale up that face. We can even twist a face like that and we can translate or move that face. Um, this is all well and good, uh, but what we might do to give us more control is we'll add another face. So we hit control E and we can move we can extrude that face and what we can do um, over a series of extrudes is we can pick say a couple of faces like this or a bunch of them and what you can find oh gosh is that we can move them and we can create an interesting twist like that. Now what I did there was I smoothed it, but I'll just pivot for a moment and show you what smoothing looks like. So if you smooth a cube like this, it'll end up to be a ball because there's no boundaries defining it, no real cage. So if I go to my modeling toolkit, and I hit bevel, I change the bevel from 0.5 to 0.05, get a nice tight bevel, it looks like a chamfer, and if I hit 3, then I'll have a nice beveled edge, I'll have a nice sort of uh, radius edge. I change that to 0.1, I wonder. So yeah, I can tighten that up even more, and I can add more segments if I want more definition. We'll do two. Be quite tight there. Take the wireframe off shaded. So if we get one, you'll see that's quite loose in radius. Let's say if I change that to 0.5, I change that to five. I'm getting quite a nice radius sort of. Um, 
quite a soft little cube there. Basically, the difference between, and once you've got five segments, um, once you, it becomes quite smooth, but if you go back to one, you'll notice that it's quite hard. So if I go from smooth that, then it's just going to smooth into a ball. But if I change the segments up to, say, three, see it's still quite hard there, but if I go to three, if I um, go to smooth section, sorry, I should be saying three on the keyboard is smooth and one is uh, hard. So we can do the same thing here. Uh, we might hit that as one. And you can see there that I've got like a nice smooth um, section and I've got a nice kink in that. Looks quite, um, looks quite beautiful. Could do something interesting with it. Uh, but, you know, I don't like this kink on the outside. So what I can do is I can grab these sections here. So I'm just shift selecting and I can get rid of these and I can grab these vertices and I can just translate them like that. So it's quite good, especially for this uh, low level of modeling. You don't need anything too, um, too detailed. And that's precisely because we're going to go into um, ZBrush tomorrow and we're going to really detail them in there because that's the best tool for the job. And you can see if you need to uh, flatten anything else, that's a really good way of doing it. Just select a whole lot in a row and then use a scale tool. So again, scale is um, R and that's a really good way of doing it. You can you know, certain sections out like that, you can solve, but you can also grab faces like this. Again, just using the shift tool. And if you want to flatten them out, you can just use the scale tool there. Um, eight minutes. We'll wrap this up for now and we'll go into some higher level stuff after this.